What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Ola here. It's talking about Scream 6 in this video here again today. Talk about Dewey Riley and his potential return, how he can be factored in. This is going off mostly just David Arquette's recent comments as it pertains to an interview he did with Empire not too long ago. So I do want to just jump in, jump on right into it because I, I, I've been seeing just a lot of stuff going on when it pertains to Dewey having David having something different compared to what I know was said by Radio Silence a few months ago and now apparently something something different altogether is stated on the commentary for the film so just to jump right on into it talking about Dewey's death from Screen 5 really quick when speaking to Empire Dewey David Arquette has stated they had not given me a heads up so I was like mime stumming up through the script wow Dewey's got some good stuff to play this time and then oh that's why I had to put put it down I had to walk around kind of process it I understood where they were coming from as far as gutting their audience it was hard it's been such an ongoing film series throughout my life 25 years of my life so it definitely cut deep he then went on to continue to talk about how he did the scene he washed off the blood afterward how he kind of go into a zen space because he was of course angry about the fact that he was portraying Dewey for the final time and then he kind of made some comments about how Wes affected all of them and how radio silence were the new ghost faces but then he regretted himself he said no you know what Guy and Jamie are the new ghost faces because they're the ones who wrote this this new movie now I've been seeing what people have been saying about this new interview and I just want to say this we don't actually know what his demeanor was when he was saying this going off of some of the videos I see of David Arquette and how he's been promoting this movie he seems to be someone who's very bubbly all the time when it relates to how he was being presented in a lot of these interviews so if there's ever an actual I don't know how this video was or how this interview was conducted with Empire but I don't think that we should instantly get into a headspace that David Arquette is is mad when he's saying these things. He's so hate. He's he's got all this pent up anger and aggression towards Radio Silence. I don't think that's what it is. Could it be? Sure. But I don't think that's what it is by just reading words. I think you can put yourself in that mindset to think that if you're someone who wants to just be closed minded on how Dewey Riley's death was actually necessary as it pertains to the script they were given to work with and the certain progressions they decided to take as it pertains to certain characters and their lives and where they were in life and how one particular important character made it very clear she was not coming back to Woodsboro. She had no intention of setting foot in town. And then just to jump to something else really quick, what I don't understand there is that he says that he was not given a heads up, but then a few months ago during an interview with Fandom, when asked about the death, were they talking to Radio Silence? And I'll leave a link to both of these interviews. One of them stated, because I don't, I don't recall really if this was Matt or Tyler, but one of them stated, are we really going to be this crazy and actually kill Dewey? Are we going to be this stupid and have Ghost Billy? You know, they were just contemplating all these things they were doing with the movie, much like killing Dewey. They're a fan of this character. I believe they are a fan of this character. So then what they end up saying is that Dewey's death, it just felt like on a story level, we have to have it because it's what brings Sydney back. And it's the emotional engine of the entire second half of the movie. It just does so much for the story and the structure of the actual movie. And then on a larger level, it does a lot of what the Drew Barrymore scene did, yada, yada, yada. So just to cut that short, the thing they went on to say is that they had a conversation with David and that the producer, one of the producers, Scott um, or William Chirac, our producer, teed it up when they sent the script to David. Like, listen, he dies in here. We don't want this to be a surprise. We want you guys to know that going into it, there it is. And our first conversation with David, David understood that he got it. He loved the script and he was like, I don't want Dewey to die, but I understand why he has to die. That sucks, but I'm in. So David himself has also stated in interviews, not saying that this couldn't be him just putting on for the cameras. He stated that he is he understood where they were coming from. He did make it clear at times without spoiling that there were some things he had a problem with. But at the end of the day, he still agreed to do it. My point here with this is that when it comes to the character of Dewey, his death was not unnecessary. It was not meaningless. It actually served a purpose in relation to bigger things that happened as a result of his death. His death is not meaningless when comparing it to other characters' deaths. Like Rachel from Halloween 5, her death ha adds no value to the overall film. Dewey's death adds value to the film. It's honored. It's mourned. People actually take time to respect the character and what he had brought to the fold for the last four movies. We see people mourn him. We see people go out and get justice for him. His death adds weight to the narrative. It is the target 
or the the motivation behind what brings Sidney Prescott back. His death was not meaningless. You can think it's meaningless from the basis of just not wanting to see how important it actually was to the overall narrative, but it wasn't meaningless. The other thing I just want to talk about also was that David Arquette was joking in that interview as well about being in a multiverse, Dewey Riley showing up, and you know just the idea of being in scream six the only way this character is coming back at this point is by flashbacks or other hallucinations if it relates to gail weathers if it's actually a gail weathers centric narrative where we can learn about their time in new york and some other things that might deal with a ghost face killer that has a motivation tied to dewey and gail's time in new york or something like that and how they played a factor in them breaking up maybe uh but yeah, the two different scenarios that or the two different things that have been stated from Radio Silence and David Arquette, it's like, OK, well, who who is telling the truth? The other thing that I need to point out is that while he's saying he wasn't given a heads up and they are saying that they are, I don't think that that also means that that means that this man signed the dotted line and then read a script. No, 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 no. I believe wholeheartedly that David Arquette read the script for Screen 5, had some gripes with it, talked to them about these gripes, understood where they were coming from, like he said, and he agreed to still do the movie, and then he signed the dotted line, despite him not necessarily agreeing with at first about Dewey dying and not necessarily thinking that was what he would prefer to do. He understood where they were coming from and still wanted to help these two filmmakers make their movie he understood the narrative he understood why it had to be done he read the whole script and then agreed to do the movie if he didn't want to do the movie he had the opportunity to not do it right there and even then if he had signed on prior to reading it there are still things that could have led to him just ultimately not doing it he is still the one who decided to do this his death in the movie is far more important than a lot of people are giving it credit his death adds so much weight to the progression of certain characters in the film it adds an another cushion under this bond that's been developing between Sydney and Gail and I feel like just a lot of people are overlooking how important that character's death was and I think it's so kind of disrespectful in a way to undermine what his death does it wasn't useless it wasn't unnecessary and it was not rude if anything okay okay Maybe it could have been done better. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. But other than that, I just wanted to come on here and talk about all this stuff I've been seeing with David Arquette because I don't know who to believe anymore. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, and miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. All right, my guys, I will see you in the next video.